Hello there. My name is Dr. Itai Tukatli Latzer from Boston Children's Hospital. And in the next few minutes, I'll present our study that investigated the relationship between succinic semi-aldehyde dehydrogenase deficiency, GABA, and autism. To briefly introduce SSADH deficiency, it is a rare inherited metabolic disorder of GABA catabolism, which results in the unique phenomenon of accumulation of hyperphysiologic concentrations of GABA and other GABA-related neurotransmitters. Since GABA is the brain's main inhibitory neurotransmitter, excess concentrations of it can disrupt the brain's excitation inhibition ratio. Now, it's far more complex than the simplified increased or decreased excitation inhibition ratio, because what we see in SSAD8 deficiency is that over time, GABA levels decline, and this is probably due to the downregulation of the GABA receptors in these patients. Now, how is all of this connected to autism? So one of the leading theories about the neurobiological etiology of autism says that it may be caused by disruption of the GABAergic system and the brain's excitation inhibition ratio. However, some studies indicate that increased excitation inhibition ratio lead to autism, and other studies suggest the opposite, that decreased excitation inhibition ratio leads to autism. Overall, and as I stated in the previous slide, we realized that the brain's excitation inhibition ratio is a very complex thing, which is probably driven by complex GABAergic homeostatic mechanisms that result in autism and other developmental deficits. So, since we know there is an increased occurrence rate of autism spectrum disorder in SSADH deficiency, and since we know that the homeostasis of GABA is disrupted in SSADH deficiency, this allows us to examine the relationship between GABA and autism in general, and also to see whether different levels of GABA are associated with the onset and severity of autism spectrum symptoms in individuals with SSADH deficiency. To investigate our hypothesis, we use the data gathered from the SSADH natural history study. This study has been ongoing in the last five years, and its main clinical site is Boston Children's Hospital, where I am from. But there are two other international sites for this study, one in Heidelberg, Germany, and the other in Barcelona in Spain. Patients enrolled in this study arrive once every two years for a very comprehensive evaluation that includes neurological, neuropsychological, biochemical, neurophysiological, and neuroimaging assessments. Out of the 61 individuals enrolled in the SSADH deficiency study so far, 29 underwent the gold standard for autism diagnosis, which is the ADOS-2 test. And out of these 29 subjects that underwent the ADOS test, 16 were diagnosed with autism in different degrees of autism symptom severity. So what were our main findings? We saw that in subjects with SSADH deficiency, the severity of autism significantly increases with age, but is inversely correlated to various inhibitory biomarkers such as GABA, GHB, and the resting motor threshold measured by transcranial magnetic stimulation. We also saw that the likelihood of autism to present in SSADH deficiency is increased once this, these individuals pass the age of 7.15 years, and once their plasma GABA levels drop below 2.47 micromole. This figure shows the results that I just described. On the y-axis, you can see the autism severity scale, and on the x-axis, you can see the different variables that we correlated with it. So you can see the positive correlation with age and the negative correlation with GABA, GHB, and the resting motor threshold. This figure in table, you can see the discriminative threshold values for age and plasma GABA, after which the likelihood of autism to occur in SSADH deficiency patients increases. What are the main messages from our study? That autism is prevalent, but not universal in SSADH deficiency, and that it can be predicted by increasing age and decreasing levels of GABA and GABA-related metabolites, 
that reflects the loss of cortical inhibition. The findings of our study add insight not only to the pathophysiology of autism in general, but they can also facilitate the early diagnosis and intervention for autism in individuals with SSADH deficiency. I would like to thank all the people listed here that helped completing this study, and especially Dr. Philip Pearl, the principal investigator of the SSADH natural history study. And I'd also like to thank you for listening. And if you have any questions about our study, please don't hesitate to contact me.